afternoon, everyone. I want to deliver a presentation on the title Wegu and the Change of International Orders in East Asia. When we think of Wegu or Samurai Pirates, or in English, it could be expressed as Japanese Pirates. But I instead use the English word Samurai Pirates, and there is a special intention behind the choice of this word. A speaker from Koka earlier introduced some Korean cultural contents related to pirates, and he said that there are not that many cultural contents in Korea related to pirates. But actually, Korea is a country that has suffered the invasion of pirates of neighboring countries. We have a lot of historical evidence about that, and we have a lot of research conducted on this topic. But despite that, we do not have much cultural contents covering this topic. When the film like The Pirates were created, I sometimes receive calls from the directors asking whether what they are planning to do is correct historically or not. So I sometimes provide advisory service to those film directors. But anyways, I think Wegu or Samurai Pirates is a very important historical fact, but I think the historical facts about Wegu has been distorted by Japanese scholars a lot. So today I want to focus on Wegu of the 14th century at the end of the Korea dynasty era. So we need to think about the harmful impact of Wegu. Let's move on to the next slide. There are some harmful impacts of Wegu, and these harmful impacts can be divided into direct damages and indirect damages. As these are pirates, Wegu is aiming to steal goods, stealing property. Please go on to the next page. So on the left-hand side of the uh, graph, you can see the direct damages such as stealing property, kidnapping, raping, and murdering, and putting fire. But there are also indirect damages of Wegu's invasion. For example, interference of sea transportation, interference of farming, and causing famine. And that leads to depletion of national finance. And the Korea's military conscription increased, and people resisted to that military conscription. Which button should I press to move to the next slide? This one? OK. So there was people's resistance to Korea's military conscri conscription aiming to defend against Wegu. So these were some of the indirect damages. But let's look at direct damages first. You can see the hometown of Isek located here on the map, which is in Jinpo, or to be more accurate, in Hansan. Isek was a scholar of the Goryeo dynasty era, and Jinpo, this area, had a good harvest every year, but now because of Wegu stealing all the grain, there is nothing to eat, Isek stated in one of his work. And there is this sculpture of Isek in Jinpo. And there are also direct damages, such as uh, putting fire. Uh, Wegu put fire and destroyed Korea's warships, civil boats, houses, and office buildings. What is interesting is that Wegu put fire on not only the ordinary households, but 
on Korea's warships and office buildings, and we can see that the intention was to weaken the military power of Korea. Back then, we didn't have a solid railway system, so logistical system relied on ships and marine routes. But because of the invasion of Wegu, there was a interference of sea transportation, and this is the first indirect damage that I want to mention. So here. Myeonchon transported grains to Kaesong mostly in winter when there was less Wegu. And because of the fear of confronting Wegu on its way, the people were as nervous as the soldiers heading out to fight. So the Korea, uh, Korea government had to receive contributions from people and taxes from people, but because of the interference of sea transportation, they were not able to collect taxes and fines from the people, and this led to the depletion of national finance. And the, this all shows the level of damage that Wegu had on Korea. Another indirect damage is interference of farming. Most of the agricultural lands were located near the coast of Korea. And a lot of people moved to the inland to avoid the invasion of Wegu. But Wegu also started to invade deeper inside to the land because farmers were moving inland. Wegu started to invade 70 miles from the coast, and that all led to the damage on the farming population. So when we look at publications such as the history of Korea and Mogun Shigo, you can see how not only the, the waterfront areas, but also mountainous uh, villages or mountain villages were devastated by Wegu's invasion. And as I said, people of Korea were abandoning their hometown because of the inv invasion of Wegu, and this led to uh, Korea people uh, having to leave their hometown and becoming tramps who wander from places to places. And because there was a damage on farming, uh, people had less money to pay to the government, and this resulted in the depletion of national finance. And this also led to famine and weakened the national finance system. So. In order to lessen the financial damage, they had to prevent and stop Wegu's invasion. Of course, another indirect damage was an obstacle on government administration. If we take a look at historical evidence, many Koreans had to wander places to places because of Wegu's invasion, but once Wegu's invasion stopped, they started to return back to their hometown, but it took about 50 to 80 years for the seaside residents of Korea to come back to their hometown. The Korean Peninsula has waters on three fronts. So to block the invasion of Wegu, Korea had to increase military conscription of people. And people in Hwacheon, they were also Hwacheok and Jin. They had to be conscribed into the military to help the government defend against Wegu, and that led to resistance to the government. And that, of course, led to the desertion of Korea dynasty. So to summarize, this was the vicious cycle of Wegu invasion. Number one, Wegu invades Korea. And number two, people leave their farmland 
And naturally, that leads to number three, which is people become tramps, wandering places to places. And number four, a severe famine occurs. And number five, death of hunger, starvation. And number six, decrease in agricultural population. And number seven, decrease in agricultural produce. And number eight, damage in government finance. So this is a vicious cycle of Weigu invasion that were uh, that was constantly repeated. Now let me move on to the types of Weigu invasion. First, invasion in near Tsushima or Gyeongnam South Shore. Here you can take a close look at the peak of the Punsan Song and there is a rampart that was built in the end of the Korea period. And you can see here the invasion route of Wegu, which is from the Gyeongnam province to Jeonnam South Shore. This is a picture of Kure. And the Seomjin River was one of the main routes of Wegu's invasion. So at the end of Korea dynasty period, Sokju Gwansong was built in Kure to stop Wegu's invasion into the Korea inland. Here you can see the picture of a related to a legendary story. And here you can see the Wegu's route from Jeonbuk coastal area and moving into deep inland of Chungna. And on the right hand side, you can see the picture of Kishin Sa, uh, which is a temple in Korea built in early Korea. And this is a place where the battle between Korea, Korea, and Wegu took place. This is a picture of Hongsan in Puyo, uh, which where the Hongsan battle took place. And you can see the picture of two white male researchers who are standing here. Uh, these researchers study French Wegu, uh, the Wegu in Korea, and they are from France. And this one is a picture of Kishin Sa that I explained earlier. And this slide is related to invasion in Xinpo and moving to Chungnam, Gyeongbuk, Gyeongnam, Jeonbuk, Jeonnam inland. And you can see that the Wegu uh, went up north through, through the Kum River. And back then, the captain of the Wegu was a very young guy. And uh, the picture shows an important milestone used by Wegu when they were invading Korea. Uh, due to time constraint, I will skip this slide and move to the next slide. And this is how they uh, used horses to move to inland from the east coast. So starting from 1350, for 40 years, the Wegu's invasion were a serious problem to the Korea government. And this was also linked to the political situation in China. The political situation change in China led to the increase in Wegu's invasion in Korea and the most effective way to defend against Wegu was to utilize the marine forces and also the guns and fires against the Wegu. And a person called Choi Moon-seon played an important role in developing gunpowder 
powder. And through diplomacy, Korea was able to receive support from the Ming Dynasty to develop its own gunpowder, and uh, it was able to use its gunpowder and cannon developed on its own in the 14th century. And on the left, you can see a submarine named Choi Mu-seon who developed gunpowder and cannon in Korea. And in 19... And here you can see a stone pagoda, which is a three stories tall, uh, commemorating the contribution made by General Zhang Ji at the battleground, Guanampo. And I would like to finish my presentation here because I'm running out of time. Thank you.